Some Greek people met Philip and Andrew and requested them for an audience with Jesus. Now the response Jesus gives Philip and Andrew does not seem to have any connection with the Greek people's request for an audience with him. Why does Jesus ignore this request of an audience with them? Well, Jesus knows that the Greeks seek wisdom and are only interested in debate and dialogue on theological and philosophical issues of the day. They probably fear God, but are non-committal. Jesus draws a line in the sand now that this is Passion Week and in effect says, the time for debating is over. Those who wish to be my disciples must lose their life in order to save it. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Whoever serves me must follow me wherever I may go. Dialogue and casual consideration is not enough at this juncture in the drama. Jesus knows their intent and so ignores their request. Either way, the attempt here on the part of the Greeks is to understand who this man is, what are his aspirations and desires, who does he see himself as and what are we going to do with him. These questions are still being asked today and the world's major religions all have their answers. Let us look at them. First, Islam or the Muslims. Muslims revere Jesus as the son of Mary. In fact, Mary is the only woman mentioned in the Quran. The Quran itself affirms that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. They defend the virgin birth and they believe that God took Jesus directly up to heaven. The Muslims also maintain that Jesus and his mother were untouched by sin. It is in this way that Jesus is understood to be the Messiah or the Anointed One and he never dies. That is the picture that the Quran gives of Jesus. But the similarities end here. While it is true that Jesus is taken up into heaven, this was done to save Jesus from the crucifixion, the Quran says. He asks God to save him from the cross and the ascent to heaven is God's answering of that prayer. Jesus is so great a prophet that God kept him from being killed and when Jesus returns, the Muslim argues, he will return as a Muslim and his presence will prove that the crucifixion was a myth and eventually will remain upon this earth and will die a natural death. In the end, it is not Jesus who they ultimately revere. It is Muhammad. He is the greatest of the prophets sent by Allah. Second, let's look at Hinduism. Hinduism is the religion of India and Hinduism is not a religion with a single God. They find the concept of one God too restrictive so our land is peppered with more than 300,000 local deities. But Hinduism has some universal qualities which all Hindus share in common. Their deities offer to everyone through rigorous spiritual practice the chance to realize God consciousness. It is to the land of India that the teenage Jesus is said to have come to get in touch with his God consciousness. The folk story goes, and it is a strong tradition in their culture, that Jesus slipped away from his parents, journeyed across Southeast Asia, learning yoga, meditation, and then returned home to Israel to become a guru of the Jews. All of us, like Jesus, have the potential to discover our own inherent divinity. In fact, you can call it whatever you wish. Your Christ consciousness, God consciousness, Krishna consciousness or Buddha consciousness. It's all the same thing. Third, let us look at Buddhism. 
the life story of Jesus and the Buddha are strikingly similar. It is reported in some traditions that Buddha was conceived by a virgin just as Jesus. Both leave home for the wilderness where each one is tempted by a Satan figure. Both return enlightened, work miracles and challenge the religious establishment by their teachings. Both attract disciples and both are betrayed by one of them. Both preach compassion, unselfishness and altruism and each creates a movement that bears the founder's name. However, Gautama Buddha lived in the 6th century before Christ. What the Buddhist does to the Christ figure is strip him of his divinity, make him into a mere man and transform him into a figure like Buddha. It is common in Buddhist circles to regard Jesus as an emanation, a partial and inferior copy, a truth body, dharmakaya they would say, of the Buddha. The Dalai Lama says that Christ was either fully enlightened being or achieved a very high spiritual realization. The fourth major religion is Judaism. Today, there is a growing concern among the Jewish students and scholars to understand Jesus. There is no longer a question that Jesus was a Jew. That much is agreed upon. But that is about all. Rabbi Nuzna who recently wrote a book entitled A Rabbi Talks with Jesus, imagines himself as a rabbi meeting up with Jesus. He says, Imagine walking on a dusty road in Galilee nearly 2000 years ago and meeting up with a small band of youngsters led by a young man. The leader's presence catches your attention. He talks, the others listen, respond, argue, obey. Care for what he says. Follow him. You don't know who the man is, but you know he makes a difference to the people with him and to nearly everyone he meets. People respond, some with anger, some with admiration, a few with genuine faith. But no one walks away uninterested in the man and the things he says and does. Rabbi Nuzna then says, I can see myself not only meeting and arguing with Jesus, but challenging him on the basis of our shared Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. Nuzna concludes, we could meet, we could argue, we would part as friends, but we would part. And herein lies the difference. Here is what the Greeks did not see. Here is what the disciples could not perceive. Here is what Pontius Pilate could not defend. Here is what Rabbi Nuzna cannot accept. The cross. The cross is what separates the Christ of Christianity from every other Jesus. In Judaism, there is no precedent for a Messiah who dies, much less as a criminal as Jesus did. In Islam, the story of Jesus' death is rejected as an affront to Allah Himself. Hindus can accept only a Jesus who passes into peaceful nirvana, a yogi who escapes death. The figure of a crucified Christ, says a leading Buddhist, Tishnath Han, is a very painful image to me. It does not contain joy or peace, and this does not do justice to Jesus. The cross. There is no room in other religions for a Christ who experiences the full burden of mortal existence. A Christ who dies is seen by the world as a God who has failed. What do I see when I see Jesus? Which Jesus do you see? Is there room in your view for a crucified Christ? I will conclude with a wonderful story told by Walter Van Jurin called Matthew 7, 8 and 9 about how he tried to stop his son Matthew from stealing comic books. He tried various ways to make him understand for several years and he continued to fail. Finally, he resorted 
to something he rarely used a spanking he did it deliberately and he was so upset when he finished that he left the room and wept after pulling himself back together he went into matthew's room and hugged him a number of years later matthew and his mother were talking about the past and the good old days and matthew happened to bring up the time when he kept stealing comic books and you know why i finally stopped he asked sure she said because dad finally spanked you no replied matthew i stopped because dad cried the last week of jesus's life is called the passion for this reason god weeps for the sins of the world and in his broken body our lives are made whole this is the meaning of the crucified christ may jesus christ be praised